Hi guys, and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the M46 KOR, or the M46 Patton Korea, to give it its full name. It's a Tier 8 Premium American Medium Tank. It was introduced into the game around December of last year, and I initial impressions of the tank when I first got it and first started playing it was that it was okay. I didn't didn't hate the tank. I did, wasn't completely in love with it, but I didn't hate the tank. Um, but I finally, it's a problem with having so many tanks to play is just some tanks just get left out and uh, then I remember to play them and I spend a few games on them. But uh, this is one of those tanks where I just kept forgetting to play it because I had so many other tanks. But I did get a chance recently to sit down and play some games in the M48 or M46 KOR. Uh, this is the first ace tank. I picked up in the tank. Um, now, even though this is an M46 pattern, and the M46 pattern exists in-game as a tier 9 uh, American medium tank, uh, it doesn't look anything like the M46 pattern we have in-game. Um, and there's some very, very good reasons for that, because this actually is more historically what the M46 pattern is, um, which it basically looks, if you look at the silhouette and the shape of the tank, it looks like a Pershing. That's what the M46 pattern was. Um, the M46 pattern we have in-game only looks like this when it's stock. And when you upgrade the M46 pattern or upgrade its gun and turret, then the M46 pattern in-game at tier 9 becomes the M47 pattern. Uh, but we'll get onto that when I talk about the M47 pattern in a video that's coming up later this week. This is the M46 pattern, which is more historically accurate because after World War II and the introduction of the Pershing, which came to the war late in 1945, didn't have time to have a big impact on the war. Um, the M26 Pershing was originally designed as a heavy tank, as I've mentioned in a couple of videos recently. Uh, now, once the Americans got an eye or saw what the Russians were doing as regards heavy tanks and the IS-3, they decided, yeah, maybe maybe the Pershing isn't quite as heavy as the IS-3, so we'll reclassify the Pershing as a medium tank, even though it was designed as a heavy tank. But as a heavy tank, or as a medium tank, the Pershing really just didn't have the engine power, the acceleration to be considered a medium tank. And uh, the Americans decided to send the Pershing back to the drawing board to basically give it a little bit more engine power, better transmission, better acceleration, faster top speed. So that's what they did around 1946. And uh, they took the Pershing into the garage, and the first thing they did was they gave it a new engine, um, which is what was called for. The engine basically increased the horsepower to about 720 horsepower, which is more than the Pershing had, or it was 740 horsepower, I beg your pardon, uh, which is more than the, the Pershing had, but... Uh, Problem was that the engine they put into it, or it wasn't really a problem, but the engine was better, but the engine also required that the transmission needed to be changed. So the transmission was stripped from the tank and a new transmission was put into the Pershing. And then, of course, the new engine and transmission also required a new braking system. So a new braking system was put into the tank. Um, so they made quite a few improvements. Engine transmission and braking system. Uh, but while they were there, they decided that, well, the 90 millimeters just had an upgrade, so let's put the new 90 millimeter on the tank. So they put a new 90 millimeter on the tank, and that meant it had to have a new breech and uh, a new muzzle brake attached to it. So a lot of changes, uh, and they didn't stop there. They basically decided, well, while we have it in the garage, let's let's give it a new fire control system, and let's 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 change some of the hatch sizes and hatch hatch shapes, and basically they ended up making so many minor changes to the M26 Pershing that by the time it completed tests or was ready to go into tests, it all but pretty much was a new tank. It basically looked a little bit like the Pershing, but, you know, everything had been upgraded, so they decided to give it a new designation, and they decided to call it the M46 Patton, after General Patton. So it was the first of the tanks to bear General Patton's name. Um, so that's where it came from. It's basically an upgraded Pershing, and uh, it did see combat. It saw combat during the Korean War. Uh, the tank was only in service for about five years, from about 1949 to the mid-1950s, but it did see service in Korea, and that's where this tank came from. Uh, it's got the Korean camo that a lot of the tanks were uh, using over there, and um, yeah, how does it actually compare to the Pershing in-game? That's probably what some of you guys are wondering. 
So it's going to be a while before I get around to reviewing the M46 Patton KR in an Is It Worth It? But I thought I'd go into a little bit more detail than usual and, you know, because it is an upgraded Pershing. Is it actually upgraded? Well, we're going to pop into Tanks GG uh, and what we can see here is we've got the Patton KR and we've got the Pershing. The same tiers, same matchmaking, no special matchmaking for the tank. And the first thing is the gun was upgraded on the Patton as opposed to the Pershing. And what you can see here is a slight increase. It's reflected in-game, historically historically speaking by a slight increase in the DPM, but it's almost identical. I mean, you would not notice that. Uh, it's got slightly better penetration, but again, with the latest penetration buffs for a lot of tier eight medium tanks, the, the Pershing has now been buffed to 190. So it's 192 to 190. So uh, basically almost identical. You know, you're not gonna notice much difference. Uh, they both got the same damage. It's a 90 millimeter, although a later version on the pattern. Uh, module damage is the same, and you can see that the rate of fire and reload is slightly better, but you know, so close, you're probably not gonna notice, notice any difference. Uh, same caliber, as I said, and the shell velocity is quicker on the Pershing than it is on the pattern. So yeah, the gun on st uh, the paper stats so for the gun they're slightly better as they were in real life over the m26 pershing the only thing the pershing has over the uh, pattern is its uh uh, shell velocity, which hits the target a little bit quicker, but uh, you know, it's not that big an issue. It is a little bit slow on the pattern, but you know, it's it's not problematic. Uh, when we come to weapons handling, though, it's a slightly different story because the Pershing's weapon, even though it's an earlier version of the 90mm, actually handles a little bit better. It's got better aim time, it's got better accuracy, slightly, uh, and it's more accurate after firing. However, the Patton's gun is more accurate when uh, moving, uh, shooting on the move, it's more accurate when traversing your tank, and it's more accurate when traversing your turret. So overall, on paper, the Pershing's gun looks a little bit better as regards its weapon handling, but you know, the Patton isn't that far behind. And to be honest, when you're playing both of these tanks, they're both very, very similar. I don't notice any difference between the gun handling on either tank. So again, historically speaking, the gun handling is a little bit, well, not historically speaking, but Technically speaking, the gun handling is a little bit better on the Pershing, but you know, it's it's so close you're not going to notice a difference. Uh, when it comes to movement, this is again more historically accurate because even though they've got the same top speed and the same reverse speed, the horsepower to weight ratio or horsepower is better than it is on the, or it's better on the pattern than it is on the Pershing. It's got a better horsepower to weight ratio on the pattern than it does over the Pershing. So yeah, that is historically accurate. That's what the whole tank was designed to be. It was designed to be a fast accelerating more mobile version of the Pershing but yeah that doesn't tell the whole story because when we take a look at the soft stats the terrain resistance on the pattern for some reason probably for balancing reasons is much worse on the pattern than it is on the Pershing so even though the Pershing has slightly less power slightly worse uh, horsepower to weight ratio it does have better ground resistance so as a result I think both tanks drive and handle almost identical um, so it, it's essentially a Pershing now the only major difference between the Patton KOR and the Pershing that I found during my playtest sessions is the turret armor. You can see the hull armor is identical on both tanks because the actual hull wasn't changed, but the turret armor was. Um, now the Pershing has an extremely good gun mantlet, which makes the Pershing one of the best all-rounders in the game. Fantastic at playing on slopes, uh, you know, basically using its gun depression. Got amazing turret armor, amazing gun mantlet, um, and a lot of people underestimate it. Um, yeah, unfortunately the Patton and KOR does not have that amazing gun mantlet. Even though the gun mantlet is huge on the Patton KOR, it doesn't, it's it's definitely not as good. So you find yourself getting penned through the turret or through the gun mantlet a lot more than you would on the Pershing. So uh, the turret armor is not as good on the Patton, even though it's an upgraded Pershing. Other than that, you can see that the uh, Patton gets 10 more hit points than the Pershing does, and the uh, ammo rack and the tracks are slightly better protected or have slightly more hit points. The other major, well not major, but other small difference between the Pershing and the Patton is the Pershing is known for its view range, not as much for the tier 9. The tier 9 Patton is 410 meters of view range, but the uh, Patton K has 390, which is still very, very good, but not as good as the Pershing. And uh, yeah, essentially, both of these tanks are almost identical. The Patton K and the Pershing handle almost identically. The only major differences I found during playtesting is that the uh, gun mantlet is worse on the K than it is on the Pershing. But uh, other than that, I think it's a pretty good and solid premium tank. But we'll get more into the history and more into the stats 
that's when it's time to do an is it worth it but it's going to be a while before that happens so i thought i'd basically just tell you guys this is a pershing but without the turret armor but speed maneuverability gun handling they're almost identical to the pershing so if you like the pershing and you enjoy playing the pershing this tank is almost the same it's got more in common with the pershing than the m46 patna tier 9 does because as i say m46 patton is only an M46 pattern when it's stock. As soon as you upgrade the turret and some of the other modules, it becomes an M47 pattern. And that's a completely different animal. But uh, the M47 pattern, or the M46 pattern, tier 9 is coming, that ace tanker is coming to the channel soon. Probably later today, actually. Um, yeah, I think, think what I'm going to do, actually, is I've got a lot of ace tankers that I need to record and I need to put up on the channel. So what I might do is I might do pairs because I've got the pattern KOR. M46 Patton KR Ace Tanker, and I've got the M46 Tier 9 Patton Ace Tanker. I might put both videos out today as a double build. I've got the uh, two new, uh, well, the, oh, well, they're not quite so new now, but they're new to me because I've only started playing them. I've got the two low-tier American tank destroyers that were added, the T3 HMC Ace Tanker and the T56 GMC Ace Tanker. So I might put those as a pair. And then uh, I've got a Battle of Kursk special because I finally managed to ace the uh, finally managed to ace the uh, Panther, and I also managed to ace the Ferdinand. Two German tanks I rebought in order to get ace tankers, so I might put those up as a, a double bill as well. Kursk special. I've also got a couple of ace tankers and American light tanks. Yeah, so you know what? I'm going to be putting out a lot of double ace tankers out in the next week or so. So. Um, you can see I'm playing very aggressively in this game. The one thing I noticed during this game loading in was that there was no RT on the enemy team. Um, and I decided to advance with the light tanks and basically give them support. We've got a bit of a wolf pack going on. But uh, er, KB-13, I just keep on the move. I shoot on the move, keep on the move. I'm playing really aggressively because this is what this tank does. This is a medium tank and you play medium tanks, you flank. You get to the side and rear of enemy tanks, and the Patton KOR is good enough to do that. So we got a nice track shot, and the KB-13 was able to finish him off. And now there's a T-29 and an M4A1 Revelarize around this corner. So the uh, T-29 is not focused on me, but I want to try and help. I want to, well, I made the decision to go help our medium and our light tanks take on the Tiger II and the AMX, but those two tanks have just run away. So while I came back to Wolfpack with those guys, we were doing really, really well together as Wolfpack. Uh, I came back to basically help them and they both ran away. So uh, there's a Tiger II, I decide maybe the AMX is reloading. I need to get to the side of the Tiger II. Doesn't matter. Wolfpack has come back to support me, but get into cover from the AMX. So yeah, I thought I had two allies here, but it turned out I had none when they both ran away and then one of them came back. But um, yeah, so uh, just playing very, very aggressively. We're up to 1700 damage, one kill. Not amazing so far, but the AMX is reloaded. I've just heard him fire, so he's fired one. There's two, he's killed our scout. There's three, we use the wreck of the tank for cover. We're going hull down, using our gun depression, pop up, use the wreck to give us lots of cover and finish off the AMX. So there's kill number two, takes us up to 2k damage. And now there's an M4A1 Revelarize. There's an ST1 who's here. And I'm I'm thinking that the ST1, where is he? Where, where's the ST1? So I thought the ST1 was going to give me support, but it seems like the ST1 is sitting there and camping. and. I know there's a Borsig that hasn't been spotted some time. I figure he's around this corner, so I could have advanced and shot the M4A1 Revelarize twice, but I thought the Borsig would have me, and I thought the ST1 was going to give me backup. As it turns out, the ST1 was, wasn't in, interested in advancing, and as a result, I ended up taking an extra hit from the M4A1. So, a little bit disappointed. Top tier heavy sits at the back of the map and snipes, and no sign of that Borsig. I end up losing 400 damage, or 400 hit points as a result, but it doesn't matter. There are only two tanks left on the enemy team. We're just advancing. We're up to 3k damage. Just wondering if I'm going to get anything more out of this, but you can see that the aim time isn't too bad. Get a nice shot into the Borsig. There's a Panther II. He's pointing his gun at me, so I don't want to drive around the corner. Panther II is... Young Panther II is dead. 
Can I get any more damage out of this game? I'm a one-hit kill now, but... Come on. Anything? Anything? Uh, no. Any more damage? No! They take him out before I can get anything else done, but... Uh, yeah, this is just a standard game. It was just playing as a wolf pack, playing as a medium, no RT in play. Uh, fortunately, I was talking too much at the beginning and didn't explain the gameplay, but uh, yeah, th there were no RT involved. We had a lot of medium tanks, a lot of light tanks, and basically we all went on a wolf pack together and basically overran the middle of the map and then supported the north of the map. The enemy didn't sp send too many tanks into town, and as I say, the fact that this tank, it's, it's a Pershing, but it gets less armor, less turret armor than a Pershing does, so uh, RT is obviously going to be attractive to this tank. Uh, if you hit this tank when you're in RT, you're probably going to penetrate and do full damage, but as a premium tank goes, as a medium tank goes, I think it's quite solid. So that was the first ace in the M46 Patton KR. Um, also the first mark of excellence, I forgot that happened. Uh, we finished top on XP with 1394, not too bad. Uh, did 3.2k damage, three kills, and uh, played rather aggressively. And as I say, there was one point, one point there where I thought I'd made a horrible decision, a horrible life choice when I decided to ignore a T29 and go and help a wolf pack take on a Tiger II and an AMX. And, then suddenly found myself alone against both of those tanks, but it worked out in the end. It did work out. So uh, it's a medium tank. You saw me using its speed, its acceleration, its gun depression, flanking, getting side and rear shots on enemy tanks. Um, it's it's. I think the Pershing is one of the best all-round tanks in the game. It's not brilliant at anything, but it's not terrible at anything. I think the Patton is slightly, slightly worse than the Pershing as regards its turret armor, but other than that, it's pretty much the same tank. It's just as much fun to play. You can play it like a medium tank you can snipe you can support you can use its gun depression it can pretty much do everything it's an all-rounder so pretty solid tank uh, we finished top or we finished with firing 19 hit 16 so I like the gun I mean the gun is pretty much the same as it is on the Pershing uh, some stats are different but you know the differences are so small you're probably not going to notice or at least I don't happy with the damage uh, eight eight uh, only one tank spotted surprisingly but uh, eight damage three destroyed did 2415 assistance damage and that's because I was tracking enemy tanks. I was also playing on the front line, spotting for my allies. And we earned 114,000 credits, which is not bad for a tier 8 premium tank in a game that wasn't, you know, I've, I've actually had higher damage games in this tank, but because I was doing a lot of assists, or because someone else was spotting and I wasn't doing my own spotting, didn't earn as many credits, but um, I think it's a very, very solid premium tank. Uh, personally, I think the Mutz is probably a little bit better because the Mutz has more chance of bouncing shots with its turret armor, uh, and even the hull armor, even though on paper is very, very similar to the patterns because of the sloping, because of the angling. I I think it's, there's a little bit more chance of maybe bouncing shots in the Mutz, but um, I like the Patton KR. I don't think it's a terrible tank. I think it's pretty solid, but if you've got a Mutz, you're probably going to prefer driving that. Um, this isn't a bad tank, and that's as close as you guys are going to get to a review until I get down to do an Is It Worth It? Uh, I'll probably release uh, the proper, the usual, the Tier 9 M46 Patton pattern uh, ace tanker later on the channel today as I say it just occurred to me as I was recording this I've got lots of potential double ace tankers I can put together where there's a connection between the tanks so that's what I'm going to do uh, you guys are probably going to get about six ace tankers over the next three days and maybe I'll get down to doing some more is it worth it's after that but uh, anyhow thanks for watching guys I'll see you next time